Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I'm going to work a little bit more on Project Depraven. This time, taking a look at some extremely useful assets. To this end, I'm going to check out the wall and ceiling FBX for Bakin. So this is going to double as a bit of a tutorial as I get this going. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get this for yourself. Knifefish created this asset pack for Bakin, and the intention is for you to be able to view the interiors of rooms without having walls blocking your way. Effectively, the walls are are back face culled, which means they are visible from the side that you are intended to see, invisible when you look through them the other way. A video is worth a thousand pictures, perhaps, so let's take a look and see how this works. We'll follow along with the suggestions, but the first thing I wanted to do was download it and then just unzip it. And let's see, in the Bakin editor, click resources, 3D stamps, add, and local files. So resources, then 3D stamps, add, and local files. Downloads folder is going to always be third from the top for me, then just drill down to the wall and ceiling models for Bakin, and then it's houseshell.exrbr. Click add and exit. Now we see this screen, which kind of makes it look like there's nothing here, except we click on resources. We can see the house shell. Yep, and it works flawlessly. So this is what we're going to make sure is highlighted, and we're going to click add and exit. And now we have it. Beautiful. We can also see that there is a ceiling, and the floor will be invisible here, uh, but the floor is really going to be whatever tile we have on the map. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to just check this out on the map itself. I have one interior dormitory type room, and this can be scaled up or down to our liking. While I'm here, I need to do a little bit of repainting and bringing those walls down. And Knifefish says, if your ground size is 11 by 12, suggest it. After dropping the wall and ceiling pieces, scale them as 5x large to fit the map. Mine's actually 10 by 10, so I'm going to resize that to be 11 by 12, so I can exactly replicate this. All right, and then we'll scale it up to 5 and make sure that it's placed exactly where it needs to be. That looks like it might be perfect, although it is snapping half a tile off. Now we have fixed that by turning the snap back on after we got it in place, and that is it. Our dormitory room is actually is actually semi-finished as far as framework goes. Now Bakin's got the same peculiarity where I try to click on things within this house shell, and it really just ends up selecting the house shell itself since it is a 3D object that is completely over the top of my environment, which means means I'm going to have to move it out of the way, kind of make sure it's one of the last things I put down, unless I can gain some skill by zooming into the house, and then I can place things around the house. For now, it's much easier if I'm working from a distance like this to move the event uh, after I move the house shell out of the way. Kind of, kind of uh, not ideal, but it's fine because it's easy to work around and the payoff is worth it. So I'm going to edit the texture of this wall now, and I'd like it to match the wall texture here, the brick. And we see that this has an instruction file included in the folder. This one can be used, but suggest you use single wall pieces instead of this all in one piece to avoid problems. Make the floor area 11 by 12 on the map. Set front face culling and material settings and bucking. Scale this model and bucking editor to 5x the volume. All done. So actually, it looks like we have alternatives so we don't run into the same problem that I just described. All right, got to figure out how to translate this onto my walls. Just got to notice that these are kind of running horizontal when in the editor they're running vertical. So I've turned my tile horizontal and now I'm going to select all but the last 32 or 64 pixels or maybe 128. I need to make sure I have 384 pixel width selected. Copy that, paste. All right, so I know that these are going to appear oversized if I leave them as is. When I put the model in Bakin, I have to raise it, uh, raise the scale by about 5x to get it to look right. I wonder, whoops, I wonder if that means I need to change the scale of this uh, by about, or rather down to 20%. Nothing to it but to do it, they say. Uh, I don't like how small that is. Is. Maybe I'm wrong and this texture gets repeated. Uh, let's just go ahead and, and try to get it repeated here. It's evident that it's not going to fit perfectly. It's okay, we'll save it and see what happens when I import it anyway. Oh, actually, I'm wondering if the EXRBR here and the FBX files for editing are considered separate. I'll grab the house shell.fbx has the texture included that I just edited, and it does have the same name. 
Oh well, whoops, we crashed. And this is what I ended up with. I did have to go into materials and enable front face culling for this one. I'm, <laughs> I can see kind of what happened. I, I think that I see the, uh, the two wall panels are actually two halves each of a four panel system. I am gonna have to shrink this down or else blow up the texture file for the wall pack by quite a lot in order to get this to display the way I want it to. I think. I'm not 100% sure. It, it does seem like it makes sense if I just shrank this by down to 20% of its original size, this texture. It's already 1024 by 1024, so I don't think I want to do that though. Basically, if I could just get it to where this used a repeated section of this rather than this panel itself, I think that would work exactly for what I want to do. Unfortunately, that gives me an idea. Hey, look, I could pay myself for my own floor and ceiling pack. <coughs> I guess it's time to rebrand my floor and ceiling pack. First, I was thinking, oh great, I've got to deal with Blender. But actually, I don't have to do that at all. So let's go to 3D stamps, add, and then pick which one of these I would like to have in my game. It's gonna have to castle. See, I made this floor and ceiling pack with the intent of being able to let people just change the texture by changing the name of the .png file that came with it to match one of their other Smile Game Builder tiles. And actually, this doesn't work the way I want it to. I need to get one with bricks. Bricks! Well, that's incredible. You can specify UV and animation when you import your objects and you can just have animated objects that way that's that's a that looks amazing that's actually something i haven't actually tried to do yet um it's not gonna work for what i need but i'll remember that in the future it's really really simple to do i think the offset is what we are looking for here all right i can't figure out how to get this thing to offset to where it'll use the brick portion of the texture that i have so instead Instead of doing that, I'm just going to replace that texture all together. And once again, I'm in paint. Keeping in mind that I am a Blender Maladroit. I don't know what the hell I'm doing in any program that I touch. So there's 128 pixels, and we're just going to paste that at the very top of this image. Save the mask, and also do the same thing for the normal, and save that as well. Save that as 001 Castle Normal. I don't think it works quite that way where it's going to go ahead and use Use the mask and the normal that I have assigned, but uh, doesn't matter. Back to 3D stamps, add castle 3x3 and castle 10x10, 10 10, add an exit, yes, replace, crash, okay, good. Uh, add all new, please. They actually did not change. That's not good. There we go. I'll just go into the materials for each of those and re-specify what texture it should actually be using. There we go. This, this is a bit weird. This is a little bit strange to me. This works fine. This works great. This is, this, this, what? Why are you over here now? Are you going to do that every time I pop out? Yes. Wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? That's insane. Oh, well, hit OK. I have a feeling something is about to break. Well, time to let it crash. Oh, justice of the desktop wallpaper. What are your thoughts? This project is awesome. You should keep going. Thank you, awesome demon. I will. Well, it loads the dormitory just fine. So I guess it's actually loading the backup, which means if I go into my resources, I'm not going to have. Oh, oh, I do. I do have them. I have the last one that was basically saved, which is the strange animated one. That is so cool, but I don't need it, so I'm gonna delete it. All right, so I literally just need a plane that has the smile or Bakin uh, castle texture applied to it at the same size as how it renders onto the map on the floor as a tile. So I could go into Blender and follow my own instructions on how to do that, since I'm pretty sure I made a video on how to do that. Uh, in Blender with Smile Game Builder, and then I just need to assign my own texture to it over and over and over again, and then save the model. It should be fine if I do it that way, because I want this wall, this brick wall, to be the wall of my dormitories and my church and everything else. But I don't want, I don't want the texture file itself to have to be more than like 128 by 128. There's no reason for it to be that big. It just needs to be as big as a single block, because this is going to be a repeating texture, a repeating pattern. So I guess I'm going to get to work on that off screen and I will see you guys in the next devlog. I know this was very unproductive and short. The next one will be about scripting and events, I promise, because I've got to get some scripting and events out of the way. So see you. Thank you for watching. Fantastic Christopher Day. Bye for now. <laughs>